fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore. And this is exploration at, at its greatest. second day of the amazing conference RISC 2020. This is the Mimoji of Ramses Gallego from Microfocus and I have checked the agenda and since I saw that he was going to deliver an amazing session on machine learning I thought that now that everything is so virtual so digital that I had my place but honestly I think that you better hear from the man himself. So Let's see what Ramses has to say on an amazing session. It's not machine learning, it's human teaching. I will have my place next time. See you, bye-bye, thanks. From Microfocus, our friend, and according to the band, everybody needs somebody to love, and we love this man. Ramses Gallego, welcome. Who I cannot hear which is interesting and rather sad, but maybe we can find the button to press somewhere that I will be able to hear Ramses in a moment. No, we still can't hear you. <laughs> Excellent, that's a good start. We know these things can happen. Um, Ramses is doing what he can, and uh, everybody's looking around to see why. Let me see. And now we have you. Okay. You can hear me now? We can. Excellent. That's great. Thank you, whoever pressed the appropriate button. <laughs> and actually, let me tell the organization that in order to share my screen, they need to uh, uh, enable that feature. So that's for the organizations, the guys in the, in, the, in the backstage. I need to do my screen sharing. So get ready, guys, because you have disabled screen sharing. Okay? Right. Let's go, Chris. How are you this morning, Ramses? I'm very well, super energized. I'm really honored uh, to be back again, not only at, at, at day two of RISC 2020, but also to do the keynote on such an interesting topic. You said yesterday that I have been in, 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 uh, in Lashko talking about quantum computing in a number of things. And I think that the, the coolest topic now is you know, machine learning. And I'm going to entertain our audience this morning, our, our delegates, with that, with that insightful topic, Chris. Absolutely energized. You always entertain us. I have one question to ask you, and you mentioned, of course, you'd done a lot of things online, a very, very large number of ex exhibitions and presentations you've done this way. Don't you miss the getting into the aeroplane bit? Because flying around is quite important to you. Oh, absolutely. You know, that I, th there were days that I, I, I've flown more than a pilot. I'm more than a pilot, so I, I miss it. I mean, certainly from March this year, I have not been able to fly, not even a single trip. I've been two times in Madrid, you know, which is the capital of Spain, from Barcelona where I live, but it's just two trips on a train. So I, I, I miss it and I, and I miss meeting people. I miss, you know, delivering things from stage, although this virtual conference is truly, truly brilliant, but I miss it so much, Chris, being on a plane and, you know, all of the hustle and the connection, you know, you know the, the beauty of flying and traveling, I would say. Yes. How many times have you flown around the world in your experience? You know, I have an application, there's an app for everything, and I have an application that tells me that I have done plus 2.2 2 million, 2 .2 million kilometers around, around the, the, the globe. That's like, if I recall correctly, the, the application says like more than 127 round trips through the earth uh, on the equator. So on the, on, the, on the longest trip, 
more than 127 round trips, which is amazing. You know, I've been I've been everywhere, literally in the five continents, including our town, Antarctica. So, so I, I've really, I've really, uh, uh, I've really flown extensively and intensively, my friend. Yes, that's like being in a space station, just going round and round and round. <laughs> Very apt to today's news. Renato, you want to? coming to this conversation. Yeah, I just wanted to say hi once again, Ramses. Uh, your wife is always, obviously already pushing you through the door, go a little bit more in the world. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but again, no. let, me, yeah, let me say that it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I mean, I mean because this is virtual. I, I, I put it the other day on Twitter and on LinkedIn, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Even this being virtual, you guys always come with microfocus and the rest, of course, of the of the sponsors and the friends. But uh, but even this being virtual, this is fantastic. I love the band. I love the energy. Yesterday, today. So so let me and the organization. Of course, there's always there's always challenges, especially with technology. Everybody talking from afar. I'm from Barcelona, Spain. You know, well, thousands of kilometers away. But we are still. You know, you're in the main room. I'm here. In my living room, trying to uh, entertain you this morning. So, so again, congratulations because this is truly, truly a pleasure, and it's a privilege for us on Microfocus to be with you this morning, guys. So, yeah. Thank you for the nice words. Uh, I can only tell you that the platform is burning. We didn't expect so much people to come, and it's really the what's happening uh, in the background is something really amazing. But thank you again to be with us. Hopefully, we are going to see you and the camera is working. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I changed, I changed the computer yesterday. Unfortunately, you didn't see me. But you saw the emoji yesterday and this morning. Yeah. So, uh, but hopefully, I mean, you can see me, you can hear me. And I'm so excited to share with you in, uh, right now I'm in the, the, my session on it's not machine learning, it's human teaching. Yes. So we'll, you, you will be able to see me again this morning. Yes. Ramses Gallego, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, you should be seeing my screen. You should be seeing me, which is, uh, which is great. Let's start with, uh, with a session in the next uh, 29 minutes. I'm going to be talking about, on behalf of, as an ambassador of my company, Microfocus, I'm the international chief technology officer. Uh, a shift in perception, a shift of an epoch. Again, I have been in risk before talking about quantum computing on stage, what a session that was, you know, uh, uh, some years ago. But but now it's it's not machine learning; it's human teaching. You know what? When I was when I was uh, preparing this session with my colleagues at Microfocus, we thought about geniuses. You know, uh, we thought about Leonardo da Vinci, and you know, uh, Mozart came to our minds. And Beethoven. Now that you have a, a rock band on stage, you know, we thought about musicians and geniuses like Picasso. The Spaniard, and Albert Einstein, you know, and the late Steve Jobs came to our minds. Why? Because they change one or more industries. They change the way we we perceive the world, the way the world was was going. You know, Einstein, Mozart, Beethoven, Da Vinci, and many others, men and women, they changed the world because they saw it differently, and. And you know, when we were presenting this session for you, with you, through you, we thought, okay, who is going to be in these very digital times that we are living in exceptional times, let me say, who is going to be the next genius? Well, actually, who or what? And then we have an idea. We really think, and we mean it, that a machine will be a genius, the next genius. Well, just, for the record, I'm not talking about androids or humanoids, you know? I mean, we're not talking about machines like robots, although if I have time at the later part of the presentation, I will, I will mention that for a second, but I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about algorithms. I'm talking about data science and computer science. Why? Because machines are better than us, I'll, I'll mark my words, machines are better than us in a number of things, especially what it has to do with data, with super correlation, with not just big data, but huge data. So machines are better than us in a number of things. And I have to say that we have to celebrate that we are humans, that for a number of decades and probably forever, there are a number of disciplines that we humans, uh, we will be still better than machines. All right. But 
But I honestly think, and I will try to prove it in some minutes from now, that algorithms, machines, they are good on that. Why? Because basically for a couple of things, a couple of reasons, which is they do not have a bad day. Actually, algorithms are always right, meaning they do what they are designed to do. Another thing is if the algorithm is biased and the ethics of all of that, and I will touch that at the, the second part of the presentation, but machines, algorithms are always right. They don't complain. They don't have a bad day. They don't have a headache. They don't have an argument with, with his wife or her husband or, or, or the boys. or No, no, they do not. They don't need to sleep. And me and you, my uh, dear delegates and dear audience, we do. We need to sleep. We have a bad day. We want a salary increase. Machines do not. But let me make up, you know, some history. Just, just, just saying that in the industrial revolution, machines were invented, were designed in order to expand, in order to amplify the capabilities of humans. Am I right? Actually, they were measured on horsepower, on how fast can you cargo, you know, that ship. You know how fast you can do things. How, how. Uh, how strong you are in order to, you know, to lift the weight, etc. So machines were designed to expand, to amplify, to, to give further reach to humans. Am I right if I say that when it comes with to computer science, when it comes to guessing uh, patterns of behavior, especially in the cybersecurity arena, that, that is my line of work and our line of work at Microfocus, especially when it's about guessing the next move, machines are far better than us uh, in, in other things. Actually, and I said the same with quantum computing, I'm going to say the same with this, uh, with this discipline. It is not an evolution, it's a re-evolution. Because it evolves the things that we know and we have been doing for decades. We at Microfocus and the rest of my colleagues in, in, the, in the sponsor and the, and, and the people in the audience, you know, identity management, risk scores, uh, patterns identification, threat intelligence. It evolves from things that we have been doing for decades in the cybersecurity arena, but it revolutionizes speed and computing power. The same thing that I said with quantum computing is applicable in terms of a re-evolution to machine learning. Oh, by the way, there's a character you need to know randomly in my, in my session. Here it comes. For you that are writing and finding this interesting game that the Friends of Real Security at the Risk Conference are doing. Okay, Q is the character. But let me move with my session because everything on machine learning, everything starts with a question. Start with an hypothesis that you will prove right or wrong. Let me repeat. Everything starts with a Q, a question that you saw before, a question that you will, you will want to prove good or wrong. But very important, let me make a statement right now on my minute uh, like, like seven, my minute six. Machine learning is a sub-discipline of artificial intelligence. When we vendors, when we consultants, when we the world say that we use artificial intelligence, well, yes and no, meaning yes, because it's a super, the super discipline. But um, artificial intelligence has five sub-disciplines, five, and one of them is machine learning. Okay, so what we really mean is that we use machine learning, which actually it's a it's a field that combines two very important fields of science, which is a lot of data, actually a lot of data, the better the quality of data, the better the hypothesis, and then the proof, right or wrong, the hypothesis. So a lot of data and a profound, super profound use of a statistical analysis. That is what machine, that what machine learning is about. So massive amount of data, the better the quality of data, the better and then a profound use of statistics in order to prove a hypothesis right or wrong, all right? Having said that, the next three to five slides, I mean, I, I, I mean, they just are here in order to support my message, which is machine learning uh, and the four types of machine learning that you will learn in this session in a minute, right, are about visual representation. They are an algorithm multiplied by, by in scale, you know, visual representation is absolutely instrumental for machine learning. This is why, and I don't have time to elaborate on that, but you know, the autonomous car and all those things. Well, let me open a parenthesis. Uh, 
you know, I drive a Tesla. I love it. You know, I mean, I love it. And and this is not just to show off. Well, just a little bit, maybe. No, I'm joking. But uh, but I love it. I mean, the way the way the car interprets the context and the surrounds. It has six eyes. I only have two. And in milliseconds, in the very same way as my brain, as your brain, you guys, we we guys drive well. But the car knows the context around it, and it can have decent and, and, and robust and solid decisions in terms of context. But visual representation is absolutely critical for machine learning. I mean, can you imagine the same for in our cybersecurity arena in order to detect, you know, that in this ever-evolving change and threat landscape that is changing, ever-changing threat landscape, that, that's what I meant, in order to guess patterns of behavior, in order to guess the next move of a cyber criminal, so visualization and not just the idea of correlation, but we are we are at Microfocus and actually with ArcSight, as I said yesterday, we call it super correlation. Not just one, two, dozens, hundreds of sources of information, different feeds, data feeds in order to guess what's coming next. And when it's about the, the defense vector, when it's about protecting and defending, when it's about, and I said it yesterday, you know, the cyber resilient approach, which is about anticipating. That's the definition of cyber resilience, anticipating, withstanding, recovering, and then evolving to the next, to the next normal, whatever that means. Pattern visualization is instrumental. This is why uh, companies like NVIDIA, you know, starting with an N, if you are a gamer, I am, but if you're a gamer, you know that you just don't need a, a powerful CPU, the central processor unit. You need a GPU, a graphical graphics processor unit that it should be, you know, super strong because visual representation is instrumental for the idea of machine learning. All right. Okay. But if you are coming to this session, hopefully, yes, in order to learn, in order to, and that's my commitment to you. And that's always my commitment with the risk conference and my friends of real security teach, to educate, to inspire, if I may say. And that's my goal as a, as a CTO of Microfocus. But there are four types and only four types of machine learning showing now on screen. You have supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, reinforcement learning, and deep learning. So by the end of this session, in the next uh, you know 20 minutes, yes, you will know about each one of them. Remember, machine learning is a sub-discipline of uh, artificial intelligence. Let's go with supervised machine learning. As the name implies, supervised machine learning requires, oh boy, requires a data scientist. Uh, well, I have chosen a kind of a crazy guy, isn't, isn't he? Uh, anyway, so but it requires something that jobs of the future jobs of the future of now. I was on stage uh, at risk in Lashko like uh, three years ago talking about the jobs of the future. And I talk about being a cloud architect. I didn't see that coming, a cloud architect? Being, you know, a, a data scientist, you know? So, so someone with supervised machine learning, a data scientist has to pick, has to tack the data set in order to prove that hypothesis is right or wrong. Well, let me move from these slides. I don't, I don't like the crazy guy. I prefer this sort of data scientist that actually understands, you know, business first, business first, business first. That's instrumental. And that's how we are building it at Microfocus. But understanding patterns of behavior. But, but let me move to the next slide. You know why? Because I am a little bit tired. And this is not because I want to be politically correct. I swear to God, you know. But I'm tired about he, the CEO, he, the CTO, he, the purchasing manager. And this is my tribute to the ladies in the room and, and, and you know, as, as the audience. And again, this is, I, I am not saying it's because I want to be politically correct. Because I don't, I, I don't care about the who. I do care about the how, about the when, about the where. So I don't know if it's he, the CTO, or she, the, the legal counsel or she, the purchasing manager, or the auditing director, or the risk officer. I celebrate us both, but it's absolutely instrumental to have full control and visibility. And certainly, and that's my hypothesis for this morning, machines, algorithms do help us. So supervised machine learning, it's already a thing of the past. Wow, really, Ramses? I mean, this thing has not, has not even started. Your presentation is half the way. 
and supervised machine learning, supervised machine learning, it's already a thing of the past? Yes, because it requires that data scientist to tag, to classify the data set in order to prove that a positive is right or wrong. This is why the industry invented unsupervised machine learning. That's the second one we have already seen, but it's already a thing of the past, supervised machine learning. Unsupervised machine learning is super cool. But I'm warning you, the other two are even cooler, a little bit scary, I have to admit, but we'll go into that in a second. But unsupervised machine learning, the beauty of unsupervised machine learning, which by the way, is the most used in the industry as a mainstream these days. So when we vendors, when we consultants, when we the industry mention artificial intelligence and we mean machine learning, we really mean unsupervised machine learning. But we'll go to the others two in a second, right? But unsupervised machine learning, as the name implies, it doesn't require a data scientist, she or he, in order to tag the, the, the variables of the data set. The algorithm is self-capable of picking the right data in order to prove that hypothesis is right or wrong. This is fantastic uh, for uh, guessing patterns of behavior. You know, that decision tree that you are seeing on screen in order to guess what's next, in order to infer, in order to understand, to, to comprehend the next move. When you apply that into cybersecurity, you can apply it to other things, you know, to service desk and IT management and cloud management and so back and so forth. But when you apply it as we do with uh, uh, to, to patterns of behavior, uh, anomaly detection, you know, that, that, that's strange, you know, Ramsey has not ever done that before at this time of the day. Different patterns of behavior with massive, remember, massive amounts of data and a very profound use of a statistical analysis. Actually, this is what Google used to use, used to use, not anymore, they do other things now. They used to use uh, to, 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 to understand if a picture was a tree, a flower, or a dog. You know why? Because Google, you know, the algorithm has seen billions with a B of pictures of a tree, a flower, or a dog. And it can, it can guess with a 99.99 of certainty that the picture is a flower, a tree, or a dog. Actually, it is super important that I tell you now that with supervised machine learning, the algorithm learns by example. With unsupervised machine learning, the algorithm learns by observation, ladies and gentlemen. And that's pretty unique and that's pretty cool, all right? But let me move, guys, because uh, uh, I, I need to move in the next 14 minutes. But the third state of machine learning, it's called reinforcement learning. And I love it because the name implies that the algorithm learns in a reinforced way, in a reinforced way. Actually, and I know, I know this, is, this sounds crazy, but also a little scary, the algorithm writes a wrong. The algorithm learns from its mistakes. Let me tell you something. I am a Six Sigma black belt certified, among other things. You know, Six Sigma is a discipline invented by uh, Motorola, although it was made famous by Jack Welch, you know, a General Electric. But basically, it is designed to understand the variables that produces an outcome and that mistake, if it's a, that outcome, it's a mistake, that thing, if it's a problem, never again. It's, it's being in, in, a, in a continuous improvement mode is what, what the Japanese is called Kaizen, being always on your A game, being always on, 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 on the best version of yourself. Well, you know what? The algorithm when reinforcement learning, of reinforcement learning, it's always on its A game. It's always learning of its mistakes. So can you imagine an intrusion detection system, an intrusion prevention system, an access control system that can, it's always on its A game. It's always on the best version of yourself, of, of, of herself, so uh, of itself. Uh, because we at Microfocus, when we use unsupervised machine learning for threat detection, and we are working now on reinforcement learning, actually, it's about 
the risk score. It's about telling the company, telling the world, telling the society, telling the organization, that's a strange, that's not good, that is beyond the risk that you have accepted. This is beyond the residual risk that you have. You know, when you do a risk assessment, and yes, I'm talking about GDPR and access control and all those sorts of things, but when you do a privacy impact analysis, or assessment, sorry, PIA, privacy impact assessment, which sits at the core of GDPR, what it tells you is, I mean, that's the, that's the risk. You do a, a, an impact assessment, and that, that's the residual risk. You're familiar with the residual risk, and I'm not talking about the conference. Well, yes, but, but not, not all of the time I'm talking about risk, the conference, but I'm talking about appetite for risk of a company, right? So, but many residual risk, remember what I'm saying, many residual risks, they become aggregated risk. Am I right? So different residual risks, they combined, they become aggregated risk. So when you can put that into an algorithm and then the algorithm tells you what's next or what's, uh, what's the next uh, uh, challenge or threat, I think that's pretty cool. Actually, with reinforcement learning, before I get to the fourth state and certainly the state of the art only available for the big names in the industry, before I get into deep learning, let me stop here for a second. And I have to tell you that through technology, with technology, for technology, we can create, we can, we can bring the art of deception, the art of misguiding the attackers, the art of, the art of, you know, yeah, misguiding them, you know, the art of, hey, if you, if you are under an attack on real time, on the fly, the algorithm, and certainly with all due respect, it's hard for a cyber analyst to be active 24 hours. I don't know you guys, but I need to rest. I'm getting old and I need and I need my time off as everybody else, as any cyber analyst on a SOC. You know, when we talk about net generation security operation centers, that's what we're talking about. Adapting and adopting machine learning in the very same way that we call it ArcSight Intelligence. We have acquired Intercept, which was a which an Intutel company, I mean, sponsored and backed and fund, funded by, by CIA, and then we acquired it, and we have put it on top of our next generation security operations, bringing the art of deception, bringing the art of identification, protection, defense, withstanding, recovering, and evolving. Last but not least, deep learning. Yes, that's, that's for the big names in the industry, you know, the Googles of the world, the Amazons of the world, and you know the Alibabas of the world, so back and so forth. Why? Because that's the idea of mimicking the human brain. May I say it again? <laughs> you know, the human brain is the great unknown. I mean, we 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 don't know much about the about the human brain, how, but we do know how it works, and it works by different layers of neurons. You know, different different layers of neurons actually uh, sending. Uh, 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 electric magnetic impulses and then sharing information. That's how the brain works. Another thing is how we feel as humans, you know, when we feel pleasure or sadness or when we are happy. That's, that's the physical reaction. But the human brain works with electrical impulses between, uh, um, between layers of neurons, okay? So when we talk about deep learning, that's exactly what we're talking about, you know? Uh, and 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 again, if unsupervised machine learning is learning by by uh, observation rather than by by example, in here we yes we're talking about the, and I don't have time to open that 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 door, but we're talking about the singularity, etc. But it is the focus is getting into into God from a machine. Actually, what you are seeing on on on, on screen is you know the explanation why the the sentence or the terminology. Deus ex machina, that thing that you are being now uh, on red on, on your screens, Deus ex machina is about God from a machine. In ancient Greek times, you know, when there was a problem on stage, when there was a problem, you know, that something happened, you know, on a stage, on a play, when they were doing theater in, the, in ancient Greece, I mean, when there was a problem through a crane, through a crane, guys, I mean, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, through a machine, they brought a goddess or a god on stage. They brought someone to save the day. 
The crane you are seeing there in the upper, uh, now, now exactly circle in red, in the upper left corner. So through a crane, through a machine, they brought Zeus or Apollo or uh, Athenia, or they, they brought her or him on stage and boom, the day was done, okay? When I'm thinking, when we are thinking, we at Microfocus and the industry at large, when we're thinking about algorithm, when we're thinking about uh, uh, expanding the capabilities of, of humans, expanding our reach, our way of reacting to attacks, to, to consequences of cybersecurity, when we are talking about having full control and visibility, now appearing soon on your screen, when we're talking about that data scientist that requires to understand encryption and identity and theft and privacy and, and, and coding and application security and phishing, well, my, uh, my interpretation of the world is the following, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully, yeah, appearing on screen soon, but let me, let me first drop you a sentence in Latin in the seven minutes that I have left. On your screen, homo omni lupus est. Man is a wolf to man. Or a woman is a wolf to woman, if you will. Actually, let me summarize it in a universal way. Human is a wolf to human. But the sentence is from Plautus, you know, and it's homo homini lupus est. Man is wolf to man. It's in our hands. It's in our hands to regulate the way we work with machine learning, or if you want to call it AI, fantastically. Because in, in my, uh, we are, in, in some instances, we are at war. I mean, when we cybersecurity professionals, cyber resiliency professionals, auditing professionals, assurance professionals, infrastructure managers, you risk directors, compliance officers of the world, at the end of the day, you realize that we are all target. And actually, the risk conference has been for many years educating and informing and sharing. And we do that and microfocus about, unfortunately, the war that we are in. In my previous, in previous uh, uh, you know, uh, versions of these presentations, I always had this sort of uh, picture that it looks like they are like, you know, like, like they do or they used to do in the sport, you know, like they are salutating different teams. But in reality, when I search about this, this picture that you are seeing, they are fighting. They are doing how you call it in English, arm wrestling. You know, they are, they are fighting. They are not collaborating. They are fighting. So this is why we at Microfocus, we decided to move from this uh, 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 picture to the second one that we'll be showing on, on screen soon, which is exactly this one. You don't fight machine learning. You don't fight the algorithm, especially when it comes to data science, especially when it comes to crunching numbers, detecting patterns of behavior. It is an instrumental feature of any security operations center. I said it yesterday, remember? I mean, the definition of a SOC is a highly skilled team using and following processes and procedures with the right technology. So you don't fight, especially when it's about different data feeds, super correlation, guessing patterns of behavior, understanding the next move of a cyber criminal, really comprehending that this event with this event and with this event and with this event, oh boy, you are under attack. So from the previous slide to this slide, you don't fight. We, you shouldn't be fighting machine learning. We should be collaborating, understanding machine learning. And of course, with all of the ethical approaches, I mean, I all, we always say with microfocus that the limit, the limit is the law. Yes, of course. But then enhancing our uh, human reach and capabilities through machine learning. That slide that you are seeing now, that's my reminder that my time is about to be up in the next four minutes, but it's also my reminder to let you know, and I have doing it every single time I have been at the risk conference, which again, it's always a blessing. It is my reminder that there has never, ever been a better time to be in cybersecurity, in resiliency, in auditing, in assurance, in threat detection, than this epoch. There has never been a better time to understand and to use technology for the great good. And we do that at Microfocus, and especially on this talk, on this keynote this morning on machine learning. What you are seeing now on screen in this blue, bluish, you know, data center that reminds me, of course, of the color of my company and, and the color, actually, of uh, what you're seeing, you know, you're seeing my face on Barcelona, Spain, on the 
that the blue as 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 the as the color of hope in a way, right? The blue as the geniuses that algorithms and machines deserve to be. All right. So my last slide, and exactly three times before finishing, in order to give it back to uh, Renato and uh, and Chris and the guys in the main room, but. But I used Latin before when I was talking about man is a wolf to man, that it's in our hands, it's in our understanding, it's in our development. In order to do it in the defense vector, in order to protect from the attack vector, because unfortunately, cyber criminals, unfortunately, they also use machine learning to attack. I have seen, we have seen attacks with zero human intervention. Let me repeat that. We have seen attacks with zero human interventions. That they, 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 you, you deploy it and boom, there it goes. I mean, machine learning gives you economies of scale, unfortunately, also in the attack vector. So we need to do it also in the defense vector. So I'm going to use Latin as my last slide and my last comment. And hopefully the rest of my colleagues and the rest of uh, the beautiful professionals and friends and colleagues and competitors that we have uh, on day two of the risk conference will probably say something on that. But... I mean, we're living hard times. Uh, cyber criminals are using this epoch in order to hurt us, unfortunately. So my my Latin sentence for the closing is that one that you were saying before is, Sibis pacem para bellum. If you want peace, prepare for war. And I'm a pacifist. I don't like war at all. I don't like any, I do not endorse any type of violence. But, but me personally, a micro focus is, the world out there is, is kind of difficult. The world out there is kind of crazy. So if you want peace, prepare for war. And certainly machines can help us on that. Before we get into the Terminator, that's for another presentation, to be honest. But before we get into Doomsday and Judgment Day and the rise of the machines, quite on the contrary, they give us hope in terms of understanding the world that we live in, this epoch that is changing at the day of light. It was a pleasure to present for you. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chris. Back to you, Renato. It was a pleasure to present on behalf of Microfocus. This is Ramses Gallego, International Chief Technology Officer. Back to you guys in the main room. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Ramses, as ever, a really, really nice presentation. Uh, fantastic. Actually, you came up with one comment in there which made me smile, reinforcement learning. I remember in the past, reinforcement learning meant some kind of corporal punishment when you didn't manage to achieve your exam <laughs> results. That's not quite the same as you mean, I don't think, but there you go. No, really nice. You, you're, you're always, as ever, uh, entertaining, which brings us you know, really close to your argument. So thank you very much. Thank you. Renato's not here, but David Ivacic is, so he's saying goodbye to you too. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Carandus, and goodbye. Thank you for a great piece.